dioxide on Mars, the place is lousy with it. It's like knee deep in carbon dioxide. In fact, I say knee deep. Uh, if you're on the Martian surface at the equator uh, at noon, it's about zero Celsius, it's about freezing. Here, 10 below, here, 30, 40 below Celsius, that quickly. Because the air is so thin. It's so thin on Mars. That was my Martian air. <laughs> The acid rain, the sulfuric acid rain, doesn't even reach the ground. It evaporates before it reaches the, reaches the ground because the ground is radiating so much heat. That is creepy, my friends. <laughs> I was on television with my good friend, uh, Jerry Falwell. <laughs> he, he was rather a bit of an odd duck. <laughs> But we were debating the important question on Easter Sunday, which came first, the chicken or the egg? And, uh, the day before Easter, or whatever that was. But I told, you know, that's a science question. Tree falls in the forest. From a science standpoint, in general, a tree makes a noise. Right? In order to get an egg that's going to become a chicken, you have to have something that wasn't quite a chicken. And wasn't quite a rooster. The proto-chicken, proto-rooster, then they would hook up, can we say that? It's a huge follow -up. Well then a few months later, we had uh, Katrina. You recognize Katrina because it's got this, uh, has this cool thing here. I say cool. If you live right there. Well, <laughs> the fires have just started. I mean, the thing's going to go on for quite a while. And you can see this literally from space. And this is really something to think about. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And this wouldn't be happening, maybe, if there hadn't been a drought and the place weren't so crazy dry as it is right now. But let's talk briefly about the suburban. <laughs> these, these are the kids at NASCAR. High-tech NASCAR, cutting-edge technology. It is not. <laughs> the engines are from the 1950s. These people are obsessed with the past. When I was young, auto racing was where you came up with new ideas and made new things and you competed in technology. These guys, by rule, have to have exactly the same engines, exactly the same. There's a little bit done with the tires, but not much. Everything's exactly the same. And whoever doesn't crash and can steer does pretty well. All these bridges over the train tracks. Suppose we had giant tunnels and you see we would have fans blowing air through the tunnels, and it would push commuters coming and going. And the fans would be paid for by tax dollars, the same way we repair for all the pothole repairs from the giant sport utility vehicles which beat up the streets. Now this is a very subtle problem. I just got to get too far a fluid dynamics field with you, but the boundary layer would really build up. It's a boundary layer control. It's got to be figured out. We're going to need uh, air lock less entries, like sort of a Chrysler Louvre wicket gate entry. More on that later if you want uh, to fix that. But here's what I'm saying. My uh, mom grew up in Baltimore. Her mother was a French farm girl who married a dashing young American army captain after the First World War. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Now, if you guys don't know this picture, this picture is uh, a picture taken by the Voyager spacecraft on Valentine's Day, 1990. And I was at Caltech just a couple weeks ago. Go Caltech, kid. I was at Caltech a couple weeks ago with the anniversary of the launch of the Voyager spacecraft, 30 years ago. 30 years ago. All right, I met Candy Hansen. Dr. Candace Hansen, who still likes to be called Candy. And she pointed the spacecraft back at the Earth as it crossed the orbit of Neptune and took this picture. The Earth is a single pixel. A single pixel. And I'm reminded of the time when I was in third grade. I was in third grade for about a year. <laughs> 
Mrs. Cochran, and she told me, she told us, there are more grain, there are more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand on the beach. And I remember thinking, Mrs. Cochran, have you lost your mind? 